we are going to get into game. What can we expect here from level one? You know, we've got the hooks coming out there. We've got charms from Ferelin Lord, the taunt from Kerp. So basically, because of the hooks, I think Alternate may want to play a little bit defensively. If J. Reed does go for Dark Wind, the silence, it is a very powerful silence because it'll bounce between multiple members of MYM, and that silence is it's one of the most frustrating crowd control effects to deal with. Does look like they're stacking up right now. Oh. They're actually going to be the ones that are moving in that Sonic Wave just, just missing. Yeah, just going in there, skimming past Makata, who was a little bit lucky for all of that, to be fair. And in the end, it doesn't connect, which he just walks away from and says, well, that's a good thing. Ward down by Redbush uh, in the Redbush and a ward over by the Golems as well. That's a very good ward in the Golems, more so than the Redbush, because you can you can almost estimate the time that Nautilus will be doing his jungle uh, if you assume he's going a standard route. However, by putting it down on the double Golems, for example, now, Lebek and Makata can have no idea that that ward is there. So they'll be able to have full knowledge and understanding of where Makata is in the jungle. <laughs> there was a I laugh. Take, I take it back. Maybe he does know the ward's there. There was a laugh afterwards straight away from the because he takes down the other ward and the crowd give a cheer. That's what you call playing up to the crowd, ladies and gents. So, pretty standard start by the looks of things here. Kubon right now is going to be doing the wolves with Charu. You see the three-man start up by the golems. Uh, nothing really to write home about. Chris and Jerry doing the golems themselves. We do see the lane swap from MYM, so you're 100% right. It's now the standard, as in your duo for red side is now going top. And I tell you what, Cubon's rise is going to be so tested this game because if he gets caught by a hail of arrows into a fear, into a dark wind, he's going to be silenced, he's going to be feared, and there's going to be so much time to put damage down. That little bit of luck factor in which way the fear sends you could literally determine whether or not he dies or not. Yep. Couldn't get lucky and it feels you're under your turret. Can be really unlucky and it feels you straight into the champions yeah. that are going at you. So uh, we'll have to see how that one all develops here. And also that middle lane is going to be another interesting one. Just for the fact that it's Pharrell and Lord playing the Ari this time around. Charu going for his less conventional, less seen Syndra, but a champion that we know can put out insane amounts of burst damage. And both of the champions reliant on landing all of their abilities, um, ideally on you know single targets. Syndra's got a little bit more splash, a little bit more area of effect damage, which plays into her favor. So the miss chance is a little bit more uh, wider, as it were. Whereas Ari, it's a single target skill shot. If you go a, like a millimeter off, it doesn't land, you don't get your damage. And there we just see half of Kubon's health gone. That's a single uh, piercing arrow with the Dark Wind flying through onto him as well. Not exactly uh, the easiest lane that he's ever going to face here. But on the same time, you know, Kerp with that Shen is going to be in that 1v2 lane as well. So we'll see how that goes. Right now, Makata coming down to this bottom lane. Not really a chance of a gank. It's more of a pressure relieving duty that he's going to take from this one. Yeah, just keep him, you know, as healthy as possible. But you see how powerful that Dark Wind is. It goes in range of Makata just as he's trying to land the likes of that Riptide. Just drop the HP of his minions if possible. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out for him. Right now, though, 4 to 10, a very good taunt. Look at the top. Oh, RNA are actually coming in onto that one as well. He's going to get hooked up here. He's He's got the double buff. He can't afford to lose this right now. The Ignite is ticking away. He does have that shield. He's going to be able to walk away from this one, but not with much health left. No, that shield actually saved his life there. He dropped down to 45 HP, and the shield is a literally 40 HP shield. That was true damage of Ignite that potentially would have burned through that one. So managing to keep himself alive, but Aranea underestimating the damage of his opponents, and Kubon with a teleport into this bottom lane. Yeah, getting in there. And one thing we should note from Meet Your Maker's side host, we'll note that in a second here because Jay Ree is in all kinds of trouble. He actually has to flash away from this one. Kuba's going to flash in on top of him. Does he have the damage? No, nor the speed to catch up with him. And that first blood still waits. Yeah, the speed uh, of uh, Rise at low level is very, very difficult to deal with. 345 base. He was unable to close the distance between himself and Jay Ree, but Makata hasn't had enough yet, just oh. missing fiddlesticks. Yeah, Creanton actually was locked up in the room prison there. Makata is still hanging around here, soaking up the XP from the lane. And we will surely be seeing him go back. 17 CS at Rise. Kubon has right now. Compare that to Kerb. It's a big difference. Yeah, it's mostly just trying to help him out. And of course, if J. Ree and Creatin are now afraid of the ganks or lower on HP, it means they're less likely to get very, very aggressive. In the mid lane, Frenelor dropped incredibly low by Charu Syndra. 
Yeah, he's not quite, in fact, both of them not quite up to level six just yet. So no ultimate available. Aranea is actually heading down. So we'll see if Charu actually gets baited into going for that low HP man. And in the end, it will just be Aranea doing a bit of counter jungling, trying to get rid of those rakes. Now, it's very good for Charu because he doesn't have Ignite. He needs to get his opponent low like that before he can actually pick up a kill. And he's about to hit level six. Double checking his XP, maybe. This wave should be enough to actually get him there. So. We'll see if he does decide to go in. Puts a decent amount of damage onto Aranea and he just dashes away to safety. Yeah, landing skill shots onto Elysian has uh, never been the easiest thing in the world. There's the fear coming <laughs> down onto Makata as the hook has landed here. On towards Kirp in that top lane. Do they have enough uh, damage to take him? No, and not enough HP to risk going under that tower as they lost sight of Aranea as well. Really good control from Libic. Not only did he land the death sentence, he waited until Kirp started to walk away. Then he used the flay. So he didn't stack the abilities on top of one another. And it's one of the most important things to learn is as and when to use that crowd control, getting the absolute maximum out of it. And it's allowing them to keep Shen a little bit lower down. He's still, you know, 10, 11 CS behind. And with a big wave in front of Rise, he should be able to extend that even further. And more importantly, his tower's about to fall. Yeah, Meet Your Maker's gonna have the first tower of the game here, just six and a half minutes in. Fantastic push play from them. And maybe open things up now for Shen to uh, get a little bit more CS uh, back into this. He's now 13 or 12, if I could actually read the screen. Now it's 13. I've covered my back from that one. Makata is still down there at the bottom, though. He's going to just dredge line back onto the turret to make sure that he doesn't get caught out for Ellen Lord had come down as well. So maybe have a little bit of a look at some action. Yeah, there were too many minions there. So even though the both Fiddle and Varus were overextended, they couldn't afford to engage and lose that massive wave of experience and potential gold. In the mid lane, Charu flashes the taunts. Yep, and the charm landing, uh, sorry, missing there as well from Pharrell and Lord. And I want to go back to my other point. Because we've got those two teleports in there here for Meet Your Makers, there's only a single Ignite and no Exhaust since Graves has, in fact, uh, got in for that cleanse. No barrier, as we see over with Creatin. So we'll see if that could actually come back to bite them later on when we've got a man chasing or they are chasing for, uh, for that fact. So there's things that are good and bad about that. The good thing is the only target that they'd want to really exhaust would be the likes of Varus, of course. Lower his attack damage, lower his attack speed. Lee Sin and Shen not necessarily known for that AD. In the mid lane, though, Achari is going aggressive. Yeah, and this could be bad news because we are going to see Stan United coming in as well. And it will come down from Kirk. Didn't really need it in the end, but it is Pharrell and Lord that picks up that first blood. And now alternate, they've come in at the perfect time here to stop Meet Your Makers doing drag. Dragon. Great timing on that pressure that actually got started by Charu being jumped on by Aranea. He tried to turn the tables and if it had not been for that Sand United shield, Aranea would have gone down. So very good play and communication from alternate. It looked like they were considering going onto the dragon, but decided against it because Graves is very close to level six, will actually just hit it and definitely would have been a, a high damage threat for that burst combination. So if you look at the goal, it's actually quite curious considering where we're at. Obviously, one to zero in kills, but the first turret going to meet your makers. Now look at the CS as well, 67 to 52 between the two AD carries, 50 to 28 between the solo tops, and 57 to 46 there in the mid lane. So overall, Meet Your Makers are doing a fantastic job at keeping that farm up. Well, MYM have been uh, a little bit more in control of their laning phase. I mean, if you think about the top lane, uh, Makla and Libic had complete control on Kerb Shen. In the mid lane, Charu was poking down for Eleanor. He was low at 20% HP for, the, for a while. And in the bottom lane, you of course had Cubon being looked after by Mokate's uh, Nautilus in those early stages. The thing that they need to do, though, is convert that advantage to more objectives. They've got one tower, but they'll need more, a dragon, or maybe some kill to really make that stick and become permanent. Yep, and now that we've got this 2v2 lane, things will get really, really interesting. A hook here or you now an aggressive Kryaton, which we've certainly become uh, more and more accustomed to throwing out uh, his ultimate to lock down Meet Your Makers. Could change things, especially since Fiddlesticks, you know, even without any AP build, he can still put down a lot of damage with that ultimate. Yeah, and you see how much damage their Makla just took there in the bottom lane. So he took a tower hit. Um, I assumed the Dark Wind bouncing the full five times between the two of them and a piercing arrow. And he's been forced to drink through those potions. He still doesn't have sustain outside of that uh, door. And Jerry's trying to set up for a good crow storm, but pretty sure MYM are going to be aware of Fiddlesticks tactics.
Yes, I should imagine so. And actually, he's just missed the ultimate down there, but Charu and Ferelnor going head to head in this one. But there is the move from Aranea. Gets in, gives Ferelnor the shield. And that will be a second kill for Ferelnor on towards uh, Charu in that middle lane. So in the bottom lane, Creighton and Jairi tried to make a play happen. Crowstorm, as well as that chain of corruption, was used. And Makla and Libic only losing a little bit of HP between them. It's not all that much. And they have their ultimate still up. So things may just settle down now and they may not who knows uh, let's have a look at the items between those two mid lanes see double doran's ring and the tier coming in for charu on syndra that just shows you that he's having to stack those doran's rings not being able to go any real uh, really any further than that on the other side though the chalice and that Finnish Codex already picked up here by Ferelin Lord. And Ferelin Lord doing his sort of standard Uri build where he opens with double fairy charm. Libic may flash chain. I know that uh, Libic actually says thanks to Crepo for teaching him how to do the flash death sentence. And the way he was poisoning there in lane, it would have been a perfect, perfect setup. They might maybe wait for Makati to come play. The fear is on. Here comes Aranea. Wow, they are going to go in there. There's a the kickback. The box down by Limic, but he's not going to save him here. He is a dead man, and it's Creaton that picks up the kill. But here come the rest of Meteor Makers. They've already got themselves one. Great taunt coming out of Kerb. May just be able to keep them alive with this one. Meteor Makers have to back off. One so for one. Trade one for one, but two teleports used as well as that Stand United. At any moment, this becomes a massive, massive party because everybody is so incredible incredibly mobile. MYM pick up their very first kill thanks to that teleport coming down from Cubon. And now they have the numbers advantage as they try to siege up this bottom lane tower. Will they be able to do it there? Ferelin Lord, in the meantime, will be pushing through the middle lane. So they need to be a little bit worried about how that one's going to go. There's a stun on towards Aranea. But those minions taken away very, very quickly here by Meet Your Makers. And that halts MYM in their tracks. Meanwhile, Ferelin Lord is still pushing that middle lane out. And he's just got a fresh wave of minions there. So he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. Actually, with that minion wave, he may even be able to take it down. What is going to happen for alternate, it's going to take about 2 minutes and 10 seconds for that stand. United has become available and it's going to be about three and a half or four minutes for the teleports. So we do see Charo getting taunted up, depth charges out, but Jerry's going to get to safety. What it means for alternate, they've got that one and a bit minute window where they can challenge uh, with the use of that Stand United and not be caught out. Oh, there's RNA again, hooked in actually by Makata, but doesn't, of course, have that depth charge available. It's going to mean that Aaron Ayer can get away. There's a ward down for Ellen Lord. He's coming around the back. This could spell trouble for Meet Your Makers. He does have his ultimate and a flash available. If he needs to get properly involved in this one, he's a little bit wary, though, of Charu off to the side. And in the end, he decides, let's recall. Let's play this one safe. We've taken the mid turret. And Creaton, most likely, is going to have this top turret away. The one thing that I really like about Charu's champion choice here in this matchup, Syndra has the ability to to do a five-man stun. If she gets a very good scatter the weak, knocks those balls of power into her opponents, she can stun every single one of them that's hit. What that means is if Charu is on form and firing like he was yesterday, he has the potential to completely, completely turn team fights in his favor. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. He is zero for two, but that's thanks to very good ganks from Aranea, not necessarily bad play from Charu. Aranea currently sat with three assists, as does uh, Kerb have two, both actually coming in from uh, using his ultimate to get involved. And the Ruby Sightstone picked up as well now for RNA, which you now uh, an important part, I think, of any good Lee Sin's kit there, to have enough wars to really use your mobility to its full potential. And not only that, all of the bonuses that that gives you, it's not just for him moving around, it's also going to allow every member of alternate to make more informed decisions. So, MYM with this one tower advantage, if they start grouping like they are now, they will be able to see it Blue buff actually went to Makate. He flashed and smited for that. They really didn't want Ferelin Lord having that additional power. Yeah, really putting a lot into that one. We can see that Shen gone for Giant Spell here, but a Hex Drinker as well coming out from Kerb. So now it is double AP yeah. after all. Uh, so not quite the, not really the biggest surprise here, but the fact is he's not going full on tankiness here. Yeah, it's a very non-traditional item, especially on somebody like Shen. The attack damage is going to benefit him, but you tend to see a little bit more focus maybe on some attack speed, which is why Wood's End was so popular in Season 2. You get his passive up a little bit more, get those key strikes down. Right now, though, alternate, they've grouped up as four. They want to reply 
the blue buff steal of their own, and it does look like that goes to Ferran and Lord. So that flash was not used, but there's Creatin caught. Oh, he's caught out completely in a horrible place here. Stan United is going to come in, but he goes down to the death charge from Makata, and I'm not sure if they can pull one back. Yes, they can. It's Ferran Lord that gets that. Jerry will die, but look at Ferran and Lord. He's right in the midst of him. He's caught. Does land a charm, but he is going to get caught up and finished off by Rise. Double kill, Kubon. So they trade one for three in that engagement, and so, so crucial. Killing Creatin before the Stand United finishes channeling. So Shen left alone up in that top lane. That window that we talked about of Stand United, that was exactly it. RNA is coming in. He doesn't steal it. And he's dead. Uh, yeah, comes in there <laughs> with the Q over the side. It was kind of a, an all or nothing move, honestly, from RNA there. And he was just a little bit too slow to actually get himself over. And I have to say, I think if I'm not mistaken, that RNA is the biggest stealer that we've seen so far. We've seen him taking, I think, two or three dragons uh, at Dreamhack himself. So now he's definitely up there. I don't have on paper the was, official. Was he not stealing the blue buffs as well from EG, if I recall correctly? Just walking in and smiting it. He's it might have been Makata, things. but yeah, he's, he's doing incredibly well, performing a lot more consistently than we've seen out of RNA towards the end of season two. And in that fight, in that engagement, because they knew that the teleports weren't down, Alternate made a power play. They're like, we know we've got Stand United. We know they stole our blue buff. There's no smite. There's no flash from Akate. So let's go take theirs. And first of two teleports has been used for a whole lot of CS. Yeah, man. Clinton is there. He's trying to get that turret down here. Jerry's going to be coming in from the side. Let's see if they can actually lock down Charu with this one. Here he goes in there. He knows that he's going to get a silence off at least. So what's the worst that could happen? He basically does that awkward fiddle waddle into lane. Good stun onto Ferran Lord, changing a little bit of damage. But the charms on Charu, he's low. Yeah, down to half HP. And put out quite the amount of damage that his opponent put in there. But look at this already. The ward war that's going on. There are so many on the map at this point. And this is something both teams did fantastically well at DreamHack against other opponents. They control their vision very, very well. If you look at alternate wards down towards Dragon, I mean, that's the entire Dragon River, as well as blue buff, as well as entry toward Wolves. There's one defensive ward from MYM, which is fantastic. It's what they didn't do last week. And it's basically what cost them a lot of kills where they could have avoided them. Well, let's have a look while we've got a possible quiet few minutes. I'll say possible because you never quite know when this game's going to uh, really heat up. We've seen the Rod of Ages picked up for Shen and the Infinity Edge there for Graves. You can compare that to the Blade of the Ruin King done now for Varus and that Hex Drink uh, Giant Spell combo that we talked about earlier for Shen. So when this build does eventually get towards completion and Kerb's got a lot of HP and he picks up something like that, more of Malmortius, it's definitely going to help him be a bit more of a damage threat, which is great for alternate, but not necessarily the strongest for Lord is hooked up, does get a Rune Prison, and that's basically one of the problems. He got the first dash of the ultimate up, before the Rune Prison went down, and he was just locked up after that first cast. It's difficult to lock Ari down. Yes, definitely is. But at least forcing that ultimate to uh, come out there, which is not the longest of cooldowns anyway, but still a cooldown. Nonetheless, as many makers stack themselves up as five here by that middle turret, will they be able to take it down with this push, though? It does not look like it, primarily because of how well uh, Alternate are defending that one. The piercing arrow, good for wave clear, dark wind, powerful, as well as Ari. Her orb of deception, the Q, just spams through and, and clears waves out very, very well. Got that um, Athene's Unholy Grail, and I'm not quite sure if this is going to go straight into a Void Staff, but it's either going to be that or a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. So additional HP or additional penetration, depending on how Ferenna Lord feels. As right now, MYM are finally sieging up. RNA has been hit. Yeah, putting a lot of damage down there as Ferenna Lord getting involved as the ulti comes out off Kriatum, but a flash away from Makata will actually lead him to safety. And again, a lot used in one big fight that ends with no kills. And Makata panicked there. The Dark Passage was right in front of him. All he had to do was click the lantern. It's on the loading screen if you read it. Click the lantern. That's a flash hook! Yeah, that is a flash hook as the box go down as well for Ellen Lord caught out. Death Charge coming in onto Creaton. He could be going down from this one as well, using his barrier. Charu coming in from the Ooh. side. Unloads for a double kill. And that is a three for one with them only losing their support. What was so great from Charu he realized how low Creatin was. He used that ultimate unleashed power on Jay Ree. Now Makla's going off to uh, Aranea. Yeah, but he is Lee Sin, a slippery person that he is. Always uh, a pain is that Lee Sin. And a lot of people hate Lee Sin. 
<laughs> I don't think it's justified. Uh, Michael here and Makata. Real talk with Joe Miller. Yeah, not not going to uh, hold back on that one. Torre is going to go down. And that will be the third one of the game for Meaty Makers. Incidentally, tied on turrets and all here thanks, with Alton. All thanks to Libic. Yeah. Libic was recalling. He was low on HP, and he's seen an opportunity. He realized there was no enemy minions between him and Pharrell and Lord. He did a flash chain, and even though Pharrell and Lord had his flash up, he did not expect that aggression. I didn't expect that aggression. Landed the flash hook, held Pharrell and Lord in place. That made uh, Creatin stick around, which meant the depth charge followed him for 10 years. And it looks like up in the top lane, Pharrell and Lord's gone on Charu. Oh, a big 1v1 here is going to come out on top of this one right now. It's looking like Pharrell and Lord. Charu is going very, very low. Couldn't quite get him down. And that will be Pharrell and Lord pretty much saying, well, I can do this kind of thing. Uh, especially when he's got his ultimate available. He dodged practically everything. Yeah, I think Pharrell and Lord ate one ability. You know, one of those little balls being tossed at him. Everything else, he literally hopped, skipped and jumped away from. So, very, very good positional play from Pharrell and Lord to not only survive the engagement, to pick up kills of him, uh, for himself. Mukate, it's a little bit late. Yeah, just a little bit. And now he could be in trouble here as he gets taunted up. He's going to dredge line half a way away, but we have got uh, Renier coming in. Can he get in front? He can if he uses the flash like that, but I don't think they've really got the damage, especially not Kerb there. And now they're going to try and turn this one around onto Renier. This could be really, really bad. There is the collateral the damage. Use a hook. Kerb in as well. Can Kerb get away from this one? Actually, Makla came away with a lantern in that scenario. They're a little bit scared of a rebuttal from Alternate. Good play from Libic as well to put the shield down. If the kill had landed, he would have picked himself up and assist in that particular engage. So good awareness on that one. Dragon will be coming up in five seconds time and Meet Your Makers are making it very clear they know. Oh, the hook misses on Jay Ree. Mokate, that was wide. He pulled it and the anchor didn't land. But the dragon is there. Meet Your Makers are going to start things off. They spot that ward at the back there, just finished off by Libic. Alternate now working their way in. He's going to be taken down. The hook will land actually on towards Jerry, and they're going to go for this one for Unload. Still at the back. By did his time here until they get a little bit lower. Jerry going to go down in the end to Makla. Here comes Aranea finally back into the fight. Makata is going very, very low. Will fall to for Unload. Kubon Mesa for the same fate. Yes, he will. Double kill to, uh, to uh, for Unload. Creaton is there at the side. Stan United use. That keeps him alive and gives him the kill on towards Graves. Can they now getting all towards Charu, who turns it around himself, but I don't think that he's going to be able to escape this one. Not now as the Q lands, and it's actually Kerp in the end with a Vorpal Blade that finish off, and that is an ace for Alternate for just one death. What a fantastic fight from Alternate. I have to question Charu using his ultimate in that particular fight on Kerp. He did not have Aranea or Ferelin Lord or Creatin to hit with Unleashed Power, and he used it on Shen. You cannot afford to use that ultimate on a non- damage dealing target, you cannot hit the tank with it. So they end up losing four, uh, all of their members. They did pick up Dragon, but that's not worth it because it does look like they're going to lose yet another blue buff. Now blue buff is going to be belonging to Pharrell and Lord here. So let's have a uh, bit of a stock take and see what we've got here. 32.3 to 32.6 thousand gold. Pretty much bang on even. This Turrets is... are even. Kills are 11 to 9. That's pretty even as well. And if you look at the spread, 4 for the AD carry, 6 for Ari, 1 for Shen in that top lane. On the other side, 4 for Rise, 2 for Syndra, 2 for Graves. This is the game we wanted last weekend. Yeah. This is the game we were expecting when we had 4-0 and 4-0 because both teams were just playing so confidently and so you know, they were on their game. And it looks like MYM just faltered a little bit at DreamHack. Now, they had the early pressure. They're still in control of the gold. And they're still moving around the map as if it's their plays to make. And as long as they don't lose that confidence, they're still in a good position. But it's all going to depend on these upcoming fights. Because obviously, the later we go, the more damage and the more it's going to actually impact your team. So here's Creason down at the bottom. Needs to be careful here as the lantern comes in. This is going to be a big push as he gets the ultimate down. Great taunt coming in. There is a teleport as well from Meet Your Makers coming down here. They have seen Syndra go down and they may lose Libic from this one. Libic does get that kill on towards Creator. Well, there was Aranea in the tri bush, ready and waiting. Now it's going to be Makla versus Pharrell Lord. Can he get in there? He's already used the active. Uh, actually, I'm telling you, he's the one with the Infinity Edge, not with the Blade of the Ruin King. Stop making things up, Joe. He 
had the red buff, which it, which it was, that got the <laughs> slowdown onto Pharrell. He's still got his ulti. And he still does have his ultimate, but he might not need it because he's got Kuba on here. Flash over from Ooh. Pharrell and Lord. There is the move away from Makla, and this should be a dead Pharrell and Lord if they can actually land things onto him. He's one more. Great job of it. One more overload. That should be him to go down. Now, I want to ask Kuba. Oh, Crowsaw misses completely. Jerry was anticipating Rise to continue the chase. But what Rise did in that previous engagement, he cancelled his teleport to the bottom lane. Now, it eventually led to Cubon picking up a kill, which is great for Cubon, but his team ended up losing that engagement quite significantly. They lost two on the bottom lane for one, and they picked up one in reply in the top lane. But I'd love to know from Cubon, why did he cancel the teleport? Was it a team call? Did he realize he could kill Ari? Was it just that he knew the bottom lane was lost? There were so many possibilities for why he decided to do that, and ends up putting him 5-1-3. He's sort of the, the hard carry that MYM are gonna look to. So right now Makata and Libic headed up towards this top side. Aranea is in their jungle right now. And Makata's <laughs> gonna get a swift kick. Can he get away from this one? Jerry actually coming in there. And in the end, he gets pulled back to the middle by the lantern. Should stay safe from that one. But now that's the that's the kick down for a little while for uh, Aaron Air at least. He's not gonna be able to get in there and cause trouble with that. Yeah, it's not the longest of cooldowns, so even at rank two, which it is now, it's a little over a minute in terms of cooldowns. So you're quite happy spamming it out. And I really like the idea. Kick Mokate into Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks will then fear in silence. And the theory is then someone will kill him. But there was no one else around, so they simply didn't have the damage to burst out Mokate, who's Fairly beefy with that Aegis of Ninja Tab, but he's got quite high resistances right now. There's a blue buff for for Ellen Lord. Obviously had his last one stolen away, then stole the enemy blue buff. So that blue buff of his being pretty highly contested. So far, Meteor Makers here just trying to steal away that big Wraith. And there's going to be a battle for it. I thought Libig was getting ready to throw that hook there over the side. In the end, decides not to. Makata actually throwing the hook out as well, which connected onto the wall. Aranea. He's going to be spotted taking that ward down. He's a bit of a juicy target here with uh, that red buff on. Yeah, as well as the Oracle's Elixir. So not only yeah. would they be able to steal those buffs away, they'd be able to get down that Oracle's, clear out the ward. What we've been seeing the entire time the siege is going on, Stand United is available, and Kerp being played, or playing Shen, is of course split pushing on the side. The charm hits Libic, it's not the ideal target. And right now, Alternate are going to need Shen to join the party or wait for that chain of corruption to land. Here we go, straight in on towards Makata. He gets charmed up as well. He's a dead man. It's Creaton that picks up that kill, goes 6 4 5. But what can they make of this one now? They've got the jungler down. And not only that, they've still got Shen split pushing. So now you have Alternate with the numbers advantage in the mid lane. They have Shen on the inner turret in the bottom lane. The signal is for Baron, and they do have vision of the jungle. So if Cubon does decide to come and challenge, they will be aware of it. But they're going to be leaving Kerb to split push. The rest of Meteor Makers are trying to set up a four versus four. Whoever catches the other players first will win this engagement. And you've got to remember that Jerry can crow storm at any point. He's channeling it up. Here comes the crows. Crow storm coming in. Kubon feared directly into the rest of the team. He is going to be a dead man from this one. Does manage to get a rune prison down onto Jerry. Not really the target that he would have wanted for that one. And they push straight through for another kill. It was a trap, of course. Baron not really started off from that. But look at the gold here, quick shot. 300 the difference. And we're still tied on turrets. Yeah, it's very, very close. And it's showing in terms of items. Each team has the ability to kill one another but Alternate have been winning the last two or three team fights. They're now setting the tempo of this game. A very, very good bait, as it were, onto Baron. They pulled the members of MYM up. Jerry was hoping for more MYM guys to be in his Crow Storm, but it was only uh, Cubon that they could jump onto. But they got his killing spree, got a couple of gold off of that, which will obviously play into their favor. And a very failed flash from Cubon. He tried to get closer to the, the lantern to you know, get to safety, and unfortunately, as he got there, he was just feared and silenced, and he could do nothing about it. Not good news for him. Let's have a look down the items once again. Both for Ellen Lord and Charo now with a death cap in hand. See the Void Staff and that Athene's fall for Ellen Lord on the other side. Just the blasting one and that tier stacking up for Charu Syndra. So we'll most likely see that become a Seraph's Embrace. Uh, it'll give him that additional shield that'll help survive any burst that comes out from Ferelin Lord if he's caught out by the charm. And of course survive any of those auto attack damage that's coming down from Creaton. I most likely think that Ferelin Lord's going to go into a Deathfire Grasp next. It's an item we see picked up on Ares all the time. Get that cooldown reduction and just get that burst. Land a charm. Follow it up with DFG, then follow up everything else. So you still get that massive, massive burst as the damage and charm isn't necessarily the greatest. And then everything that follows up gets all that damage amplification thanks to the item. 
hell. What's the plan here for Meaty Makers? We're going to see Macro secure in his red buff. Libic now with the Oracle on is going to be trying to clear some things out. And it looks like Shen is going to be going after all, after what we said earlier, towards our wit's end. So that's very unique. This is something that we, we haven't seen from Shen's in an extremely long time. I mean, I'm thinking back to before IPL 5, season 2 times, when Shen's were built with those wit's end up in the top lane if they did get ahead. Kerp at 1-0-11. You can't blame him. A stun onto Jay Reed. They've caught that Aronea. Yeah, a lot of damage there onto Jay Reed. Here comes the teleport as well. Aronea knocked up by the depth charge that was going through onto Creighton. But there is that Lee Sin almost getting away. Libic actually gets the final tick of damage coming out. But look at Creighton. Makata going very Good low. For Ellen Lord coming in from the backside. Makler is dead in mid air there. <laughs> it was halfway gone into his jungle, into the jungle uh, via the lantern. Oh, but oh. for Ellen Lord, wow. That's Stand a United. big face check coming in. Stand United will come down and the star, the tongue comes in as well. He managed to land it on all three of them. Libic's not going to have the damage here, I don't think, to get rid of Frelan Lord. He will die to Frelan and it's now Kubon versus Kerb and Kubon is basically headed into no man's land right now. He's going to go into the top side of that jungle. Might be lucky enough somehow to get away from this, but I doubt it. But we do see Creatin moving through the jungle, but what a fantastic fight for Alternate. They were caught out four versus two or oh, in the mid lane. They managed managed to not only get away with it a little bit, they lost two members while picking up four. It was just perfect positioning and placement. Now, Creighton still thinks he's going to be able to cut him off, actually decides just to steal away the Wraith camp. Manages to get to safety and a very good fight from Alton. They landed the abilities they needed to. We lost track of uh, Makla as he was flying through the air on the lantern because he was being killed by Ari and flying through the air while he did it. Yeah, and the funny thing is about all this fighting that we've had going on here. I mean, it's 19 to 13 in kills at this point. It's still 3-3 in turrets. They've not been able to push down any turrets recently. And it's basically because of the farm numbers. Rise, because he's been sitting and had so much time alone in lane, he's 50 CS over Shen. You've got Graves, who's 30 CS over Varus. And I've just noticed on that last back from Pharrell and Lord, he's picked up a Hextech Revolver and a Longsword. Levick's been caught. Yeah, Libby caught out here. He's going to get kicked back by uh, Aranea, but he flashes away from it. And now they turn around on towards Aranea. The snipe almost catching him from Creatin from that backside. Pharrell and Lord's charm misses. He just dashes in there, but they're not able to pick up a kill. And again, a lot burnt on that one with not a lot coming from it. This is something we love to see from teams, that they are not afraid to just use their abilities, albeit they weren't able to pick up the kill. It does show an intent to do anything possible. Jerry might be in trouble if Charu gets a good stun. But he doesn't. But so, he doesn't. So nothing happens. Not quite. And Jerry just saunters on back in. The burst plus the damage from Baron would probably have been enough to kill uh, Jerry, even with that HP he's got from the Kindle Gem. Just want to quickly touch. It looks like Forelan Lord is making his way towards the Hextech Gunblade. Because of that long sword and the Hextech Revolver, it's the only logical like, thing I can think of that'll eventually upgrade out of that. Well, let's have a look then, see where he uh, decides to go with that one. Right now, I'm going to be clearing out. He's up to 270 minions almost. That's a good chunk away from Syndra, but we get into that point of the game where, you know, the farm numbers, well, of course, they mean something because it means the extra items coming in there at the end of the day. But you now another 10 minutes in this one and everyone's going to be pretty much fully built anyway. Yeah, and the fact that both teams are still so incredibly close, even though Alton have been winning the previous team fights, MYM just needs to pick a better engagement. They're trying to catch out alternate and with a Shen on their team, anybody they catch just gets Stand United or did and joins the party and they carry on fighting. So I don't think that's the right way forward. And I think MYM are talking, right, how do we how do we catch them out? What do we need to do? Where do we need to position? And I think wards will be the, the key here. Put some wards down, get vision control, and then jump on alternate when they're not expecting it. Now we see it. We are going to have Kerb going back into that uh, to uh, sorry bottom lane. So, uh, try and get that turret down, being the split much uh, split. <laughs> split pusher. Oh, they've caught for Ellen Lord. They've caught for Ellen Lord, and they're going to go straight in on top of him. But Libic taking a lot of damage there. He got a good box down. But now Kerp is in there with that Stan United. And it's going to be a double kill coming out for Creatin. Can they get any more from this? Aranea does land the Q onto Charu, but decides not to follow through. So the way they were fighting, the minions were able to pick up the tower. It ends up trading one for two. So again, MYM losing out that engagement. Another thing is that they've lost the tower as well, actually. So uh, we'll see how this pans out for them. That split pushing Shen finally paying dividends took a very long time for him to get that bottom lane tower down, but it is down now. 
And I think Ferenald's going to go for a Lich Bane after he's gone for this Hextech Gunblade. He's going to have some additional attack damage, combo with the movement speed and the, the, the proc that Lich Bane's going to give you. That's a pretty big bursty champion in that regard. Definitely scary. And if there's anyone who knows how to play, probably would be uh, for Ellen Lord. I don't know how many times he's been in this position with an Ari. Maybe not quite at this mag uh, magnitude of play with alternate versus Meaty Makers playing for the top spot in the LCS Summer Split here in Europe. Let's have a look through some of the other items then. Runic Bulwarks on both sides. The AD carries now both have an Infinity Edge and a uh, Blade of the Ruin King each. However, if you look towards Varus, Phantom Dancer is done. Only a Zeal on the other side. And he's already got the workings of what will be, I'm guessing, that last Whisper. Yeah, so 250 attack damage on Varus to the 230 on Graves. Varus, of course, will be able to deal more, more sort of... Uh prolonged burst damage. I know it's a terrible term, but he's going to hit blight stacks on multiple people and then hit them. Teleport's coming in from Cho. He's motoring. Oh, he's got the home guard boots on there and he's going to try and get in on top of Ferelon Lord, but look at that. Popped. He missed. That's the whole thing. Charu jumped in there. He tried to use Scatter the Weak to stun up Ferelon Lord and it didn't work. It's not over. Levick's been caught too. Oh, that charm not quite landing, but Ar Aranea does land the Q onto Kubon. He's got a Banshee's Veil, but Mokata, he's going to go down. It's Creaton that picks that one up, and that's three men dead. This is surely a Baron for uh, our alternate. Now, MYM tried to make a play. They tried to make something stick, and it backfired. It did not work. Charu, three, seven, nine, somehow not able to have those epic performances against alternate. At 35 minutes on the clock, the Baron buff has been secured, and... That's pretty much going to hit a big now what do we do button for MYM because Alternate have won, I think, every single team fight for the last 12 or 15 minutes. Yep, and now with that Baron Buffon, they're going to be starting to push things out here once again. Let's see what they can actually do with that one. Funny thing is, in that last fight, which we didn't really see, Kubon teleported in to the backside of them, ran through the alternate jungle, realized he wouldn't get anything, then ran back towards his tribush. It was a bit of a comedy of errors coming out there as the hook does land on towards Libic, but he's going to go down here for Ellen Lord, not scared of getting right in there inside the base. Now he has to get away. He leaves Kerb. He's pretty damn tanky, though. He's taking a hell of a beating. And power. he will survive that just about. So the shield from Lee Sin managing to keep him alive. The safeguard then followed that up with a feint of his own, his own shield. Jairi is getting very, very close to having that locket of the Iron Solari completed. So with that shield as well, even if you get close enough to killing alternate, they're going to have those survival mechanics. They're going to have those shields to help them out. And that is a full locket ahead of his opponents. There is no locket sitting on the side of MYM. That would be then two lockets ahead because we've seen both Jairi and and Aranea pick up a locket there as well. Uh, we did see the Phage being picked up by Shen on his return home. So just overall a very, very scary alternate right now. Uh, the Sheen is there as well, which I'm not sure if that was there before and I just missed it. But he's obviously working himself nicely up towards that Trinity Force. It's kind of refreshing to see a Shen uh, that's going this path as well. You know what? When you're 3 0 15, I said this a little while ago, if, if you're in a power position, if you're comfortable with your team playing, comfortable with the decisions you're making, you can build damage. You can afford to go that route because if your opponents aren't killing you like that yet, you're just going to be able to keep, you know, keep control of the matchup. And it's something that the entire alternate team is doing right now. Well, another big pick up there. Guardian Angel for Creatons Varus. He's 11-4-8. He was romping ahead in the uh, KDAs for as we came into uh, this week at 28.7. That's gone down a bit, obviously, after that Gambit loss to Gambit. Gambit Yeah, they crushed his KDA dreams. But he's doing a good job of actually pushing it back here. So take a look at the positioning here for Jerry and Aranea. They're wanting to set up a play. We're talking about the champions and sort of how they're going to scale. Yes, Rise and Syndra will do very well as we get later on later in the game, but Shen's going to become unkillable. Aranea on Leeson maybe falls off a little bit in terms of the, the damage front, but will become a very beefy, tanky person. And Varus is always going to offer more to a team than Graves. Basically, because Graves and Syndra can't pop somebody instantly with all those shields with a GA, it's very, very difficult for MYM to win team fights now. So, here we go. The front one actually getting stunned up there by Syndra. The ultimate comes out, but... Most of it dodging, only half of Frelm Lord's health gone by that, and that is not a good sign for Meet Your Makers. Also, in just one single camp of Wolves, Frelm Lord goes from 45% HP to full, thanks to the spell, spell vamp. vamp, you say? Yep, spell vamp from that Hextech Gunblade, from her passive on every 10th proc of, of uh, damage dealt, etc., as well as now lifesteal. 
So it's going to add that as well. It's sitting on a BF sword, so that'll most likely become a BFG. My prediction for items has been way off for Renelo because, hell, who builds a gunblade on, on Ari? Well, apparently for a little more does. doesn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as I said before, if anyone knows how to build it in this position, probably would be him. 10-3-8 currently uh, with the most farm in the game at 331. Right now, alternate looking to get in on towards his bottom turret. The hook actually did land there onto Pharrell Nord, but not followed through by Libic. Probably a wise choice. Yeah, even though they got that ability to land, they don't really have that insta-give potential, but look at that, Charu is an insta-give range. And he's dead. That's another one. I feel like I've said that a lot today because these compositions that we have between these two teams. Makate 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 gets hit there with the charm. The uh, piercing arrow comes through, and look at Jay Ree. He's right in there. He gets the fear onto Kubon, who's kicked back by Aranea. Then they switch off and go towards Libic. Kubon's running for dear life. For Ellen Lord, though, wants to get the kill on this. Libic did go down to Aranea. Can For Ellen Lord track him down? He knows where he is. And it's just a case of trying to catch up and getting health back from the red buff as he goes by. Plus with his 18, w. plus 40, plus 40, just on you know every single ability used. Kubon is taking us on a wild goose chase. He's very shortly going to get his ultimate up, which will give him a movement speed boost. But while that is happening, the split push is happening in the mid lane. The tower is down, as is the inhibitor, and now they're going to jump onto this bottom lane in hip turrets. Yep, going in for that one. Kubon is still running, but there's the ultimate for Ellen Lord, and there is a dead rise. For Ellen Lord, really, really really wanted that kill. Probably would have been better for him if he actually just came back from that, because he was the one doing more damage than Kubon could have put out to stop that push coming in. But either way, this is going to be inhib inhibited turret number two, as they managed to hook Jay Ree in there. What alternate turn it round. Makata loses a third of his health, but now alternate finally do back here away. Comes Charu. Here comes Charu. Teleporting for him. He's going to nuke down Jay Ree, but he's a dead man himself. It's Creaton that picked up another one. Makata now right in the thick of them. Makla's going to come in. Guardian Angel of Creaton and his pops and meet your mate uh, sorry alternate have stayed there welcome a little bit too long and now they fix their attention on towards Kerp he goes down triple kill for Makla but is it going to be too much uh, too little too late here comes for Ellen Lord no ultimate available but it will be very very soon and I have to feel that it is too little too late even with all of that gold that was just picked up they used absolutely everything in their power to get items down and or to get kills down and it just simply it just didn't feel very important Libic now caught by for Ellen Lord. Yeah, for Ellen Lord has picked up Azonia's Hourglass. We've seen uh, the Trinity Force of Shen finish, a Twin Shadows for Fiddlesticks. There was one more in there somewhere which I can't quite put my finger on right last now. Last Whisper for Varus. Yeah, Last Whisper for Varus. That's the one. Which. <laughs> Yeah, just another three or four items that just make them more, uh, even more ridiculously strong. So the one thing that does play a little bit into MYM's favor is that now they have the Void Staff picked up on Rise as well. So he's already very beefy and tanky thanks to that Seraph's Embrace. All the mana going to help build him up his shield. He's got the, the HP from both the Banshee's Veil as well as that Rod of Ages. Now he's going to deal more damage thanks to Void Staff. We also see a Runic Bulwark and Phantom Dancer picked up for MYM but they're 10,000 gold behind. They've lost an inhibitor in the mid lane, the tower in the bottom lane, and they're gonna be forever in base defending until those super minions stop shoving them down the middle. Yep, we do have Baron, of course, up here in just five seconds time, and as such, Jerry got it pink ordered. And Libic misses. One of the easier hooks that I think he could have uh, this game. Obviously having full vision of that one. Britain going to get himself the red buff and he's going to come back up because this Baron may just end up in a fight which could end the game. We're 43 minutes into this one right now. In addition, the mid lane for Alton is pushed all the way down to the inhibitor turret. So if MYM were to win a convincing team fight uh, you know, in and around the Baron pit, they're close enough to the inhibitor to actually shove it down and, and rush it down, especially with all the attack damage that Graves will be dealing. Right now, they're looking for Ellen Lord. Look at Aranea. Stand United is up. They may be deciding to pick a fight. They've caught for Ellen Lord. They're going to get for Ellen Lord here. Stand United does come in onto him, but look at the damage that they're putting out here. Libic going to go down, surely. Charu is going to be chased in. For Ellen Lord going for that one. Makla will die on the return of the prism. And now it's Charu being chased. Will he die? No. The room prison from behind for Ellen Lord. Somehow staying alive. Aranea shields him up. Kerb will dash in there for the kill for the double kill and that is the ace here for alternate and surely the game and Kerb does that for style points too the flash into taunt plus vorpal blade landing all of the damage there
Sancharo closing it out, even with an awesome, awesome hook from Libic onto Ferran and Lord's Ari. It was not enough. He was able to get those shields, get that life steal back, and dive the hell out of that fight with his ultimates. Fantastic game coming out, and that's, as you said, the one that we were expecting last week when they met when they were.